Well, uh, uh, since we last uh, talked, uh, Coach, uh, two wins. Uh, can you – anything in those two wins that, uh, uh, you know, strikes you as uh, reasons why you came up with back-to-back uh, -back wins against VCU and uh, uh, Indiana? Well, I think our kids had been really working hard and really buying into the things that we're doing, making progress in practices. Um, even a couple of weeks ago, um, I saw a kind of I saw them turn a corner a bit. Um, unfortunately, when we went to the Nevada tournament, we weren't able to pick up any wins. But I thought we played really hard, and I thought we were doing some good things. Made too many mistakes. Um, still learning and, and have you know playing some pretty young people. So um, you know I I appreciated it that they continued to work very hard. Um, sometimes that can be a little disheartening, and I I saw that their spirit was a little bit shot coming out of the Nevada tournament, but they worked very hard. Um, I thought the VCU game, we played well enough to win. Um, shot the free throws better down the stretch than we had previously. Um, we made some big shots and we got some stops defensively. I think defense was a big, big part of it. Uh, if you look at both the VCU game and the Indiana game, um, we were able to control the other team's offense much better mm -hmm. They were able to in, in the earlier games. Um, I think that's a part of it. And then against Indiana, you know, we shot the ball so well, and, and we haven't done that yet this year. So that was a, a real plus for us. We we had a lot of people stepping up. Um, I also think that if you look at our last several games, you'll see that we have had three or four contributors, um, significant contributors, to the scoring and rebounding column, and. Before that, I think we were always searching for one other person besides Shay to step up, and now I'm starting to see some consistency in who is producing and, and what we can expect from them game by game. One of those contributors, uh, uh, while not in the starting five, is when Haley Schmidt has given you some really big minutes in the last two games, has yeah. she not? She sure has. Um, I think. Uh, the first game against VCU, she came in and hit you know two two consecutive threes in the corner um, it, when they went to a zone against us, and mm -hmm. that forced them to come back out. And when they did that, it opened up some things for Shea inside. Um, it was absolutely a major factor in winning that game, um, and and she contributed in a lot of ways, not just that, but it. She got a lot of minutes, and she played very hard, and she contributed both offensively and defensively. We then went to play at Indiana, and you know one of the things we've struggled with is kids off the bench consistently being efficient mm -hmm. in games. So you might have one kid who steps up in one game, and a different kid who steps up, steps up in another game. And you know, in some respects, as long as you have someone, that's positive. But it is there's something really nice about consistency, and so when you can have you know what you're going to get out of each kid. Um, that's you know, it's just really very positive for us. Um, so when we played at Indiana, um, you know she got in, and and I think that she was playing better offensively than she was defensively, and she kind of turned it up defensively for us. And uh, you know she took a shot, a three-point shot in the corner at a very critical time in the game and missed it. And I thought, well, that's confidence for you. She hit that shot twice against VCU and, and she needs you know, she knows that that's that's way she can contribute. She didn't miss she didn't make that shot, so um, just a couple possessions later, with less than two minutes to go in the game, she has an open look from the other wing and takes it with no hesitation at all and hits it. And they had cut the game to three points during that time. So it was a huge shot for us. Um, so just really excited to see her contribute that way, and, and I know she's really excited about it too. Have you seen her, I mean, it, was there something in practice or that that you saw that, you know, Haley deserves to be in more or just production on, on the floor during a game? Or? I think it's a couple of things. One, Haley never stops working. I mean, this is a kid who has worked her heart out since her freshman year. She doesn't take practices off. She works very, very hard. And you know, she and I have had a number of conversations about it's going to pay off for you. You just you keep working; it's going to pay off. What was happening with Haley is 
you know, I, I will put in the game the person or people who have contributed in practice who have really shown signs of, um, you know, positive play. So, you know, and I want to be fair to everybody. So if, if you step up in practice one week, then I'm going to give you a shot in the game. What happens is what do you do with those minutes? And Haley, you know, the first game of the season, Kyla went in, made some things happen, and, and so then she was the one that we went with first in the next game and, and so on and so forth. Um, and we still, those two have kind of been on a roller coaster ride, you know, contributing one game, maybe not so much another. Um, so for Haley, it's, it's always a, you know, I, I want to give Haley a shot because she earns it in practice. She works very hard. Um, but her production on, in games hasn't always been consistent. So when she went in and had a great, you know, game against VCU, she stayed in the game and played, I think, a career high minutes that game. And then, of course, she got the first nod against Indiana because of her play against VCU, and she did very well. So um, we're starting to feel more and more comfortable with her. She's definitely earned it. Uh, so obviously now you're able to go with maybe like a six-person rotation then? Uh, well, I think we're, we're really digging into a seven or eight-person rotation, okay. and I mean, maybe that's not evident. Um, each game for us, but I think you can see that there are eight kids who are getting into the games and we're going to give them a shot each game and hopefully they'll, you know, be efficient on the floor and um, we'll be able to give them some minutes and they'll be able to rest some of our, um, you know, some of the kids that are playing a whole lot of minutes for us. Okay. Uh, you also, uh, when you're talking about other scores besides Shea, the last two games you have had double figure uh, production from uh, Corey and uh, Kirsten. Yeah. Is, is is that a big help because you are able to uh, kind of spread the points around instead of it all being on number twenty? Well, that for sure is a is a major benefit to our program. Um, and Corey and Kirsten um, are two that right away in the season in the preseason uh, we were able to just notice how much more um, they were going to contribute. Now last year they were freshmen and you, you just don't know what your role is going to be and you're just glad to be on the floor and there's not a lot of expectation for you know what you're going to score or how, you know that kind of thing and they're just trying to fit in and find a, a place. This year they came into practice with a different attitude that they were going to be you know key players in the rotation and, and so forth so what I'm seeing is kind of what I expected to see out of these two, and and I would love to and expect them to continue to um, gain confidence and experience, and that that's even going to improve better, you know, better at this point. Yeah. I think a couple of weeks back where you talked about uh, Kirsten's uh, lack of offense mm -hmm. at that point, and since then she has been yeah. uh, scoring more. And once again, is it just confidence? Is she shooting it better? Is she getting better looks? Um, you know, after the first two games, I was noticing she's taking four shots or five shots maybe, and, and you know, the first game she didn't score at all, and the second game she scored two points, um, and that was not what we expected at all. We really thought that she was going to, you know, be able to score ten points a game for us, um, and we were asking her to do a lot defensively, pick up full court, um, giving her a pretty difficult defensive assignment, and I think she got very consumed with that, and so I took her aside and said, you know, is that all you're going to, you know, provide for us? Because I think you've got a whole other side to your game. And she, you know, she said, absolutely, I need to, you know, I need to pick it up on the offensive end. And she's very capable. And the nice thing about Kirsten is that she doesn't press. She just takes what is given to her. You know, she t has an open shot. She can hit it. Um, so she's taking good shots and making good decisions. She's not trying to do too much. And, and I think she can be really effective for us that way. Okay, and I mean, and you're getting your double double lot of uh, out of Shea every game. Is I mean, how do you think she's been playing uh, uh, at this point through seven games? Well, I think she's been great. I think she's been great. I think um, she's doing all the things that we need her to do and that we expect her to do. Um, and in the last game, you know, she assisted very well as well as scored well. Um, and that was a really big team we played against, um, the biggest we've played against so far. So I, I just I really f see that she adjusts her game and is able to consistently give us 20-plus points a game. And she didn't have to do that in order for us to be as successful as we want to be. So 
I'm very pleased with what she's doing and proud of how she's, you know, evolved into this, you know, go-to player that, that we have. Uh, you got Miami coming up. Uh, what do you know about the uh, the Red Hawks for Saturday? Well, I know that they're a very strong program and a very good team, and they've been picked, um, you know, to be very successful this year in the MAC. Um, we, I've watched some film on them. They set a lot of ball screens. They have a very significant point guard uh, who really does the majority of their scoring, um, playmaking. She's very crafty. Um, so they get they set screens for her to provide opportunities for her, and then she gets other people involved as well. They also have a, a really good, I feel, a really good post player, um, at least one, and I'm, you know, it's going to be a good matchup for us. I feel good going into the game. I think that we have maybe an edge in the athleticism and quickness, mm -hmm. that type of thing, and hopefully we can utilize that to our advantage. Um, they're very... Um, they're very, uh, I don't know, just they're, they're methodical and they get things done, they're efficient, they work very hard, um, they're very a very good unit, they play well together as a team. So it, it's going to be two different styles of basketball, though they seem to run the same five-out motion that, that we run. So um, you're going to see similarities in some respects, but a lot of very, you know, very big differences as well. So um, it's going to be a very good matchup for us. I'm looking forward to it. It's not too many coaches at this school who can say that they have won two games in a row against the Big Ten opponent like you have against Indiana. What What is it against Indiana that has made uh, uh, you successful against them? Is there any just mean, or is it just that you know you play very well in those games? Um, you know, we, we also had a, a game against Indiana in between there where that we didn't win oh, okay. at Indiana, but um, but we. I think we we match up well against them. I think um, I think you know, and I think the head coach at Indiana would say and has said that we're a difficult matchup because we don't. They run traditional post players, and and very big ones at that. You know, they had a six six kid on their roster who played quite a bit, and six fours and six threes, and who are back to the basket post players. But we don't have that now. They tried to exploit that, and that could have been a real problem for us. Um, but we were able to. You know, also exploit the fact that we don't have those type of kids, and we everybody can face the basket and score, and that provided some mismatch problems for them as well. So, I I just think in this last game um, that those mismatched mis mismatches were to our advantage, um, and you know previously uh, when we played them before and won in overtime, uh, we you know we had a really strong team, very different from the team that we have Lord now, is. but. Uh, very strong and disciplined and um, you know we caught them at the right time and just you know any any Big Ten win um, at the mid-major level is yes, just it's something to really celebrate and my kids are really excited about it I think that they're um, they're very motivated to where how we can use this to spring forward right. well last question that I have coach uh, just taking a look at the league uh, this uh, season, uh, obviously Green Bay is, you know, is where, yeah, they're obviously very good. They're, they're seemingly they're good every year. Uh, what about the others? Uh, Youngstown State so far is at five and one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in that, uh, are you surprised in any of the uh, early season, uh, either games or the, well, the way teams are playing so far in the Horizon League? Um, you know, I. Uh, I guess the biggest surprise would be Youngstown, but you could see that they were really learning how to work together in this motion offense that they run. Um, they shoot the ball very well from the three-point line, so you have to guard them outside. Um, and they're running a back cutting and screening offense, so you know it, it is difficult. And their personnel is well suited for the motion that they're running. And as they have become more comfortable with it and more efficient in it, I think they've become a better and better team. Um, they've got a few really good players too, right, so yeah. um, you know I, I'm really happy for them that they've emerged. You know, they, it's been a lot of toil and you know very hard work to get to where they are now. Um, and then in the conference, Green Bay, of course, as you mentioned, but also Detroit. I mean, I, I think you can't overlook them there. A very strong team. They they provide a lot of mismatch problems for a lot of people because of their mm -hmm. big inside game. Um, so, I really I think those three teams are going to be very significant in our league. And 
Um, as far as how we stack up in that mix, that remains to be seen. Um, I think, you know, w we have some time here to continue to grow, and I think we're on the right track. So, um, you know, that that is yet to be determined where we're going to fall in this mix. But I think we've got a lot of potential, and I think we we have a chance to really compete this year. So, I'm looking forward to to that. But we still um, we still have some work to do before we get there. Okay. Thank you.